Hey everyone! What extra do you get when you buy a premium board like the Maximus 10 Hero over something like the X370A? Is it worth the extra money? Okay, so it's quite early days for me in the fact that I'm having to review stuff or make videos quite ahead of time to make sure that I can get enough done and get enough out on the day of launch. Because I'm quite clearly not just going to build a system, I need to actually get some tests done. And the problem when we're doing stuff like that is it does end up meaning that we have to do reviews like this to kind of fill the graphs out. Now normally I would have liked to have left the hero a little bit longer but I was it's one of those ones where I leave it a little bit longer and then you go and watch everybody else's review so I'm going to do my one a little bit of a different way this time. So you are going to get graphs and it's going to be these two boards in the graphs because at this present moment of time of filming these are the only two boards I have tested. I have tested the uh, the A which is the board that I've done my CPU review on and now this is my second one before anybody else moans, the boards after that I do after this are going to be MSI and Gigabyte and they are going to be on the channel on the day of launch as well. So do not fret, there is many, many vendors to go and watch. So at the end of the day, what do you get? Because this is going to be coming in at around £175 and I'm going to say that this is kind of the entry level one really uh, entry level for z370 that is obviously you'll be able to get like i'm assuming we're going to get a like b350 and stuff the, the 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 naming scheme is blowing my head to bits because it's obviously quite similar to the amd stuff so really what do you get when it comes to in the box itself i'm going to be brutal about it not a lot you get your SATA cables, you get your RGB um, extensions, and it'll be an RGB extension for the normal RGB and an RGB extension for the addressable. You get a coaster, all right, but it's, you know, that's not gonna be 75 quid's worth. And other than that, it's a fancier box, because you get the little pop-up bit at the back. Oh, you do get a sticker pack, but again, I'm not sure there are many of you out there that a sticker pack is going to sway your um, purchase or at least it certainly wouldn't mind so it really does come down to the boards themselves so first and foremost fans between the two you get an extra two on this one and by an extra two I mean the six on here there's eight on here you've also got AIO outs and dedicated water pump outs as well you can also with this one track the temperature of any water cooling down in the water cooling zone here and you can have an in and an out for your water cooling zone as well and there's also a header that you can plug in to track the fan speed of the pump that you're using so th this is definitely down the more um uh, enthusiast orientated line. You can also see that there's a lot more components down here in the audio section um, uh, compared to this one. So you've got better audio on this one. Also with uh, talking about RGB, with this board, you do get one full one at the top, one full one at the bottom, and you get an independent individual uh, addressable. Now the addressable is the three pin one. So you've got those kind of options as well. Also, like I said, there are quite a lot of fan headers going on around the outside compared to the A. There's another one there, there's another one there. So you do get quite a lot of fan headers. You've got the uh, PCI poster readout up the top as well. Now this, if you're overclocking, will be invaluable. You will love it. If you're gonna end up getting a new case as well, you've got a USB 3.1 out that on this one. You don't on the other one. The, uh, the other thing that you do get on this one, you've got um, the, your M.2 down at the bottom here, but you do get this funky one up at the top. Now you do get an, a heat sink on the A and a blank one at the top, but this one's all built into the normal kind of like your chipset heat sink. The other thing that you do get on this one is in comparison, there is a much higher set of components for your uh, power delivery. And the power delivery itself, um, they're both 10 phases, but this one's got higher quality caps, higher quality chokes, and higher quality MOSFETs. So you've got all of that. When you're talking about like memory bracing and GPU bracing, all of that is pretty much the same. But the, uh, the big one, really, the difference between the two is the fact that the, um, uh, the Hero does have and I'm turning lights off to try and show you, I'm not doing very well, am I? Does have RGB. So the, um, the uh, A 
it does, and I'm gonna swap over live while we're doing it, and you're all wondering how I can do the magic light up. The A does, but it's only at the top of the board and down the very outside. So there's not a massive amount of lighting. Now I know a lot of people don't like lighting, but it, it you know, it's getting to the point where it can be the difference between you know, the board that you want to get. And at the end of the day, they are RGB, yes, but you can just set those lights to one color if you want. And that brings in the accents of your rig. Now, the other thing that it's got, and it's something that they brought down from the more higher end ones, is a built-in IO shield. Also around the back, compared to the A, you don't have what I would call the pointless DVID, because if you're spending all of this money on a rig, I would have thought you had a decent monitor. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got HDMI and DisplayPort. You have that on this, but you get a DVI as well. Also on this, you get a CMOS clear button around the back and a uh, BIOS flashback uh, switch, which can be handy. And the only way you can clear the BIOS on this is down here. So there's a little jumper. So it's proper old school when it comes to the jumper. So really, it's, it's not just about aesthetics, but it's the stuff that's on the board to make your life easier as well. I mean, the IO shield's nice, the lights are nice. I think it definitely does look like a more premium board as well. But you know, it, 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 would that be enough to make you spend an extra 75 pound? I think a lot of us would probably end up buying this one anyway, just because of the aesthetics on it. What about the performance? So when it came to performance and trying to rattle it round because let's face it, I haven't got a lot of time and I do need to get loads of these done, um, they were very similar and in some of the results they favoured one and some of the results they favoured the others. And I'm just going to keep bouncing up stuff to the side that you can have a look at and rather than drawing attention to any specific one. So one of the things we'll say, I've got five gigahertz out of both, but with the uh, Hero I did get higher memory for a screenshot. Uh, so I did manage to get 4,000 megahertz out of it for a screenshot. Now, one of the weird things is, is we are in the early days, but it is when it comes to Z370 and Z270, they are pretty much the same. So expecting the memory to just be leagues and leagues and leagues in front, at least at the moment, they're not. So uh, yes, I did get 4,000 megahertz. Would I be telling everyone that buys this board to go and buy 4,000 megahertz memory though? No, I wouldn't. And that's not the board's fault. It's just the way that the CPUs are. It's, that's just the way it is. 3,200 megahertz, if you want a number out of me, would be where I would go, would be my favored one. Yeah, you can buy 3,000 or 2,800 if you want, but 3,200, if I was gonna build a rig for someone would be what I would put in this or this for that matter. But this one is capable of going above 32, whereas this one, at least when I was testing, wasn't. So 3,600 and 3,866, you get really, really nice boosts in performance. Whereas at 4,000, you are getting to that point where, yeah, it's a screenshot, but it's gonna take some manual fiddling and messing around with to get going. So really between the two, like I said, some scores are better, some scores are worse. This one scores better with memory because you can run the memory higher. You know, you know there's, there's trade-offs with both. One of the things I would say though is that the, the overclocking on this one was significantly easier and I genuinely think that if I had a bit more time I probably could have got 5.1 out of it which may not make a massive difference when you say it out loud but in the benchmarks it would have then put it in front and it's only really been the fact that I haven't had enough time because essentially I'm trying to get a CPU done on one board and then three or four other board reviews done in a five day period, seven day period um, and, and normally I spend like three days minimum on each board as it is. So it's trying to condense it all down and getting it all in time. I do think this has got more to offer. I also think this has got more to offer with another BIOS increment or two, but then again, this one will probably get better with men memory with another BIOS increment or two, but it probably won't do any more on the CPU. So there is big trade-offs, but anyway, Stuff in the box with this one, is it worth the money? No, but to be honest with you, I would prefer it that way because I'd rather have the money that I'm spending being put on the board rather than rubbish in the box. And when it comes to the actual board itself, I think the accessories, the extra bits and bobs that you do get um, on there, it does have a much higher quality uh, VRM and power up there. So they're not gonna be running on the ragged edge. On, for five gigahertz on this, the chokes, I couldn't touch them. They were so hot. Now there's no temp way to you know, test those within sensors that are on the board, but on these, 
they were yes they were warm but they were nowhere near that um, hot so these ones were working very very hard to give me five gigahertz power quick easily uh, cleanly and these ones just weren't um, so yes at the end of the day the way I'm going to swing it is uh, with the Maximus 10 Hero is it worth the money for 75 quid, yes, it is a big step, but I would personally say, yes, it probably is. Just for the aesthetics, the extra stuff that you get on the board, the fact that it is gonna make your life that little bit easier. And I think if you're gonna run it hard, its whole life, it's probably gonna end up lasting that bit longer as well. So, OC3D Enthusiast Award.